Hi everyone, I'm Rena Nine, and thank you for joining us. After a major delay, a majority of the Iowa caucus results will be released later today at 5 p.m. This comes after the Iowa Democratic Party found inconsistencies in the reporting of three sets of results. CBS News has also learned the new reporting system may not have been fully tested in some areas, and despite this, some candidates have claimed victory. Most have already moved on to New Hampshire, and that's where the nation's first primary is being held. But for more on the chaos and the confusion in Iowa, here's Major Garrett. We know there's delays, but we know one thing. We are punching above our weight. Democratic contenders shocked by the lack of results rallied their supporters to cheer what might be. By the time it's all said and done, Iowa, you have shocked the nation. When those results are announced, I have a good feeling we're going to be doing very, very well here in Iowa. But the mess in Iowa means the battle for the Democratic nomination has stumbled out of the gate. I got to say, I'm a numbers guy. We're still waiting on numbers from tonight. Iowa Democrats were stunned and confused. I don't really understand. It's, it's pretty vague when we're just told that the results were delayed and there's no reason given. In the end, like, there are numbers. So where are the freaking numbers? Precinct chairs reported glitches with an app that was supposed to be used to send results to the party. Tina Weber, precinct secretary of Waukee 2, said she had to rely on other methods. We couldn't have people waiting in that room packed in hot just because the app wasn't working. Those who tried to call in their results experienced long holds. Thank you for calling the Iowa Democratic Party's caucus hotline. All of our representatives are currently busy. In a statement, the Iowa Democratic Party said this was simply a reporting issue. The app did not go down and there is not a hack or an intrusion. The day before the caucus, we asked state party chairman Troy Price if he had any fear about tech glitches or other problems. Do you have a nightmare scenario? And if so, what do you do about it? <laughs> these are probably the most prepared we've ever been as a party for these caucuses. We've run through a few different scenarios, but I can tell you we're ready. Former presidential candidate Julian Castro, now a supporter of Senator Warren, said the delay proves one thing. That this simply is not the way that we can do this. It was a complete mess. Dallas County Democratic Party Chair Bryce Smith tried to put the best face on things. It's better to get the information right the first time than to three days later go, oh, actually, you know, this is what happened. But as the night wore on, candidates shifted their attention to the next contests. East to New Hampshire and then west to Nevada. So it's on to New Hampshire. <laughs> Nevada, South Carolina, well beyond. For more, I want to bring in Ed O'Keefe in Manchester, New Hampshire, and Zach Montalara in Arlington, Virginia. Ed's a CBS News political correspondent. Zach, a campaign reporter for Politico. So, Ed, as we mentioned, the Iowa Democratic Party just held a call where the majority, where, where they said that the majority of the results will be released about 5 p.m. Eastern. What do you think we can expect to see at that time? We're told that we'll get around 50 percent of the results so far. It's unclear why we won't get it all. Uh, but on that call, the Democratic Party officials said that it would be more than 50 percent, but not 100 uh, percent. This was a call with campaign officials, uh, representatives of all of the various campaigns that participated last night. And there was some significant pushback, it sounds like, from some of them as to why the party would release only partial results and not the full results. Those that are expected to do well are fine with this because they're like, well, you're going to produce a paper trail eventually. All the data will come out. It'll be fine. That would be Bernie Sanders, Pete Buttigieg campaigns who by dinner time tonight here in New Hampshire would like to be able to say, see, the results show that we actually did do very well, that we're in the lead and that we're uh, in good shape here as the New Hampshire primary campaign begins. Others are going to be concerned and say, unless you can produce an entire paper trail, you may see us in court. And, and that's uh, one mm -hmm. of the things we're watching for now in the coming days is whether any of these campaigns feel that there wasn't a sufficient paper trail as promised that shows us down to the precinct what the first preference was for voters, what the second preference was for voters. And if that isn't there, we may see some kind of a challenge. Wow, it, it sounds like it could get slightly ominous there. And when you talk about, you know, if you can walk us back for a second, what actually originally happened here? What are these inconsistencies that the Iowa Democratic Party is talking about? Sure, remember they were gonna release three sets of data. 
uh, because remember, this is a multi-round caucus system. You show up, you stand in a corner of the room. If your candidate doesn't have 15%, what they call viability, you're invited to move on to somebody else to try to convince others to join you or to leave altogether or join an uncommitted group of people. Uh, what there's concern about is that in some precincts, that number, the first round number, may not have been properly reported. And then in the second round, there may have been issues with whether or not that was properly reported. One other rule, if you were standing after that first round in a corner with a viable candidate, someone who got more than 15 percent, in many precincts that might have been Bernie Sanders or Pete Buttigieg or Elizabeth Warren, you're not allowed to move to somebody else once you're with somebody who has viability. We have heard reports that some people may have moved regardless. Mm. This is hair splitting to most Americans. I appreciate that. <laughs> You can imagine how confusing it might be to Iowa Democrats who don't necessarily participate in all of this, who don't know the rules inside and out like party officials do and have made this very difficult for people. So there could be some dispute there. But bottom line, what appears to have happened, you were supposed to use an app on your phone to report the results back to Central Committee in Des Moines so that they could compile all the data. There was some user error. There were some people apparently who didn't know how to use it. There were others who were saying the app didn't work. That all depends, you know, case by case. It could be the app, it could be the user. Either way, there is a paper backup. The party's been collecting that in the hours since last night to make sure they have it for all 1,678 some odd precincts. They will eventually, they claim, they told the campaigns today, be able to produce the paper results, the receipts for every one of those results. So, Zach, you know, Ed says there's a paper trail, no matter what, that they can fall back on. But what are officials in Iowa now doing to secure this results? No matter how you look at it, it's not a good look for the Democratic Party. No, it's an awful look for the Democratic Party there, frankly. Uh, and the best they can do is, you know, go ahead and release results when they have them. You know, it, it's good that the uh, Democratic Party didn't rush out results last night, certainly. That could have been a, truly a disaster if they started having, you know, just a couple of precincts trickle in with no real context behind it. But right now, you know, we're just kind of in wait and see mode. You know, Iowa is a state that's supposed to be able to vote quickly. You know, in a state like California, which is coming up on a Super Tuesday, we won't have results there for potentially weeks. They have a long, long history of mail balloting. But one of the play, you know, one of the plugs for Iowa is the fact that they can get these results in quickly, that they can be a cohesive answer quickly. And this is really a, a horrible case for them to have the potential to have an Iowa caucus in the future. Now, this is incredibly damaging for that. This may be the last Iowa caucus. Mm. And both Pete Buttigieg, Bernie Sanders, as you mentioned, uh, you know, they're declaring victory in Iowa, even though the official results aren't in. What do you say? What does this what does this say as we go forward into New Hampshire? The fact that they're already declaring victory with zero percent of the precincts reported officially here. Well, look, anyone coming out of Iowa wants to be able to project momentum, either uh, in reality or in some fantastic spin job that they may have done after the results in Iowa. And certainly that is what the Sanders and Buttigieg campaigns were doing last night as they headed in this direction. In fact, Sanders isn't set to arrive here until this afternoon. He had already planned overnight in Iowa. Um, so, you know, if by the end of today it's clear that Sanders and Buttigieg did in fact emerge one and two in whichever order, then certainly they have the mandate uh, to, to, to spend the next few days telling New Hampshire voters, look, you know, we are the party leaders here. We are the ones that you're really choosing among. You should stick with us. Buttigieg would especially benefit from that because he has become a factor here in New Hampshire, a third or fourth place poll sitter at this point, whereas Sanders is usually placed towards the top, given that he's from neighboring Vermont. He's a well-known commodity here in this state, uh, having run back in 2016. So, you know, and Buttigieg has made clear for the last several weeks, we need to show, not tell, that we can do this. Showing the results of Iowa would prove not only to voters in New Hampshire, but in Nevada, South Carolina, and the Super Tuesday states that he's somebody who has viability. One of the things that the Buttigieg campaign last night with their partial, incomplete, unverified data was showing us is that they believe they have the broadest coalition, that their numbers were healthiest among young voters, among older voters, in the suburbs and in rural parts of Iowa. The argument being, if you're looking for that crossover artist who can lead the Democratic Party, win over independents and possibly disaffected Republicans, we're the ones. Sanders would turn around and say, look, our message of Medicare for all, uh, pushing to address income inequality and take on President Trump with very liberal policies is working. Therefore, New Hampshire Democrats, you should join me. If that's the contrast, that's an incredible option for voters here if they're trying to decide between the two of them or the others. Zach, do you think the person who might win the most is Joe Biden, who is expected not to do the best? Yeah. Yeah, Joe Biden it could, you know, really stand to benefit from, the, you know, this muddied field here. 
Uh, he really, you know, his campaign was kind of playing down expectations even before the caucuses, before this whole debacle, saying, listen, you know, it's not just Iowa, it's the four early states. And Joe Biden is really hoping to have some sort of level of firewall, you know, perform better in New Hampshire, certainly, but some level of firewall in Nevada and in South Carolina, especially. It's will that firewall stand? Will voters stand with Joe Biden if he kind of starts to, you know, get chipped away at in Iowa and New Hampshire? That's the real question. And, you know, looming over all of this is Michael Bloomberg, of course. Michael Bloomberg was not competing in any of these states, and he's lying in wait, waiting for Super Tuesday. Uh, does this help Michael Bloomberg? Maybe, maybe not. You know, it's, the field is certainly remains muddied. There's no clear results on who's going to emerge out of Iowa, at least not yet. Maybe we'll get some later today. But, you know, Michael Bloomberg's still waiting, and he's not competing in these early states. And right now, at least, it looks like there's no clear leader coming out of Iowa, and that could help him. All right. I want to thank you both, Ed O'Keefe and Zach Montalero. Thank you very much for joining us. I want to head now to our 2020 campaign reporter, Musadik Bidar. He's in Des Moines, Iowa. So, Musadik, what is the Iowa Democratic Party doing right now to secure the results? Uh, Rena, here's what we know right now. The Iowa Democratic Party will release more than 50 percent of the results in just a few hours. That is expected at 4 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Eastern. This was announced on a call that the Iowa Democratic Party held with the campaigns. That call ended moments ago. CBS News was on that call. It's unclear what more than 50 percent means right now. We don't know if that means 80 to 90 percent or 52 percent. Uh, officials with uh, Vice President Biden's campaign raised questions about that strategy on the call and asked the party why they're releasing more than 50 percent of the results and not all of them. Uh, party chairman Troy Price pushed back and said this is how it would have gone on caucus night. The results would have trickled in as they were coming in, uh, but they are still working through this process. Uh, in the meantime, party officials are going around meeting with every county chair. There are 99 counties in the state. They're meeting with every county chair and collecting the paperwork. They're collecting voters rolls, uh, caucus night math sheets, uh, new voter registrations and presidential preference card to make sure they have all that data. This is standard operating procedure. It would have happened in any other caucus, but that usually takes about a week. Obviously, there's more urgency now. Uh, so we are waiting for the results to keep trickling in. The party chairman, Troy Price, would not say when more of the results would come in. He just said more than 50 percent. And we are waiting to see uh, what that will look like in just a few hours. I'm curious, Mr. Dick, what's the mood like there among caucus goers in Iowa? Are they disappointed? Do they realize uh, how sort of the eyes of the country have been on them. There's a mix of feelings. There's obviously some stress and anxiety. Uh, last night I was at Senator Amy Klobuchar's caucus night watch party speaking with a few voters. Uh, some told me that they were upset the results didn't get to come in. They were looking for some kind of celebration before heading home. Uh, but I also spoke with one woman as she was heading out the door uh, just before midnight central time who told me to be patient. She said that uh, she would rather have this process be transparent uh, and done properly than to rush results. Uh, and so there's a mix of feeling. But the campaigns are, are obviously frustrated with this uh, because what you get out of Iowa is the momentum, uh, the momentum to carry you to New Hampshire. And so far, no one campaign has explicitly been able to claim victory and claim momentum going to New Hampshire and Nevada. Uh, and we're going to have to wait and see in just a few hours uh, who is going to get to do that very explicitly. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Iowa caucus night has produced some fascinating moments from Howard Dean scream to President Obama saying they said this day would never come. I want to thank you, Ms. Dick in Iowa. Thank you.